JS films. So I've been uploading a lot of anamorphic videos from the GH5 and I know you guys like it. So first of all, thank you because I'm just starting out. Seriously, I've maybe shot 10 videos total, including test with anamorphics. So thank you for all the kind words and thank you for all the tips. Uh, so now I'm gonna talk about my setup again because I just added something to this setup. So here is the GH5. Uh, by the way, somebody asked, I'm shooting this with a micro cinema camera right now. Um, so I have the GH5, the Helios 44 to 58 millimeter f2.0 and the Sancor C anamorphic projector lens. So if you already, if you don't know, if you have a setup like this, you're going to have to focus both of your lenses, meaning you're going to have to focus your taking lens and anamorphic lens separately. And if you're running and gunning like I do and it's just traveling, shooting videos, that's horrible. That's really hard to do. And if you're sh shooting narrative and you have actors that can just stand still or whatever and you have time to focus two lenses, then that should be fine. And also with this setup, uh, your minimum focus distance is five feet. So I did some research. A bunch of people online suggested SLR range finder, SLR magic range finder. So let me go ahead and do some pros and cons just real quick. Pros, it turns your double focus system to a single focus system, meaning you can rack focus. All you have to do is set the taking lens to infinity as sharp as you can, set the anamorphic projector lens as sharp as you can to infinity, and then there you go. You have a single lens system, which is awesome. Another pros is it reduces the distance, focus distance minimum to three feet and six something, six, 3.6 maybe, which is much better than five feet. So I can focus a lot closer to my subject with the SLR Magic Range Finder. Uh, cons, it's heavy. It makes this setup, I mean, look at this friggin' thing, man. Look at this, it's humongous. So it definitely makes the setup a lot more heavier. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stabilize it like this with a gimbal that I ordered, but yeah much heavy. Another thing is the front filter thread of this is 82 millimeter. I have 77 millimeter ND filters, so I had to get a step down ring for me to be able to use it. It's not really a downside, but I just wish it was 77 millimeter on the back and 77 millimeter on the front. So totally like understandable, that's fine. They had their reasons, maybe because it has big front glasses because it does act as a diopter. Totally cool, workable, but yeah. It's really big. Um, another thing is, if I didn't mention it already, the focus extends. So that means you can't use vari variable NDs or any polarizing filter. You just, it's not gonna work properly because it extends whenever you focus in and out. So that's kind of like a cons. Uh, another thing is it's expensive. So this setup right here is starting to add up. Mind you, it's still cheaper than buying an anamorphic lens, much cheaper, but just be prepared to spend more money if you want a single focus solution like this one. So I'm gonna be doing some tests with this, hopefully tomorrow, just simple stuff, just to see if it's even workable. I did some mini tests, which it's working like it's supposed to, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to show you guys what the setup can do. Uh, I got a couple more anamorphic videos to upload. Thank you all again for watching and subscribing. Uh, thank you for all the topics. By the way, I'm almost done with my GH5 versus micro series. So if you have any other tests you want me to do, speak now because I'm, I'm almost ready to give my verdict. Uh, see you guys later and thanks for watching.